I grew up learning how to hide. That is to say, who I really am, how I really feel, what I'm really going through, is not important enough to merit the attention of others, and not even God would be really concerned. I mean, there were real people going through real tough things, so you should just kind of hide. I grew up in a, an alcoholic home. My father was an alcoholic whose parents died when he was four, and so he had bonding issues, and so he and I were hard to figure out, and, and I always felt kind of invisible, youngest of six, that kind of thing, in a, in a family that was just kind of not great at talking, dealing, all those kinds of things like that. And I was taught to hide. And there's a lot of ways to hide. You can hide, obviously, by actually being quiet, shrinking back, isolated, and staying in your room. A lot of people hide behind social media. They put something out there that really is not them, or they watch everybody, but they never really engage. Some hide behind performance. That is to say, I'm going to keep doing and proving my worth and going and, 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 and proving that I'm valuable. I'm never going to really let you see when I'm afraid or I'm disappointed or insecure. Some hide through dysfunctional or bad behavior. That is to say, they keep acting out or keep acting, acting uh, in, in a, a way that just doesn't make any sense. By the way, if you're a parent and you have a little one that keeps acting out, you can focus on the behavior modification of just focusing on them getting to stop that. That, and I get just wanting them to stop that. But usually they're trying to tell you something about something they're feeling or experiencing or doing, and they just haven't got a process yet for figuring out how to express it. And, and so, so the way we go about teaching, parenting, all these things teaches people to hide. One of the ways that Christians teach themselves to hide is they got up their pain. You know what I mean by that? They say, you know, I'm hurting, but you know, God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Flat tire. Gee, Jesus is Lord, you know, all those kinds of things like that. And some of that I get, good, positive talk, and all those kinds of things like that. But sometimes we forget that perhaps the deepest kind of, of worship, the deepest kind of expression is what we've been studying in this series, this thing of lament, this thing of honestly being um, real about the hurt, the pain, the struggle in my life. And here's the big thing I really want you to get this weekend. Okay, are you ready? If you hear this, you can check out, but don't. But you could. Your pain wants to be seen. It wants to be felt. It wants to be acknowledged. It wants to be heard. Your pain wants to be seen. And if you're one of those people who say, you know what, mine's not a big deal or it's not a good thing, let's just stop that. Because in this life, we have trauma. We have lots of trauma. I can't tell how many people I've talked to, well, they'll tell me a story, and the story is absolutely painful and real and human and hurtful. And they say, but you know, it wasn't that bad, or I'm doing fine, or you can just see them kind of shrinking back from it. You don't, have to, you don't have to see me. It's okay. I'm fine. The camera people are freaking out right now. Anyway, I'm going to come back in. But you can just see them kind of shaming themselves into saying, you just need to hide that away and push that away. Well, one of the things many things we've learned, is that, that God doesn't want you to do that. Lament teaches us that, that, again, one of the highest forms of worship, in fact, it may be the greatest form of worship, is when we go to God with an accusation, with a complaint, with a disgruntled, when we come to him full of emotion, even cursing, when we start saying things that are exaggerated, out of proportion, blown up, things we don't really mean but we feel, and when our actions come in the form of emotion and yelling and, and, and ups and downs, when we bring that to God as we are, when we let him see that, and we, we let that be seen, that is actually when God says, that is what I've been waiting for. That is worship. That is real. That is not the absence of faith. That actually requires the deepest faith. That I can come to you, God, and I can show myself completely as I am, believing that you are so good, so loving, that you're going to love me anyway. Again, we've been saying in this entire series that lament is just everywhere in the Bible. A full third of the Psalms, that is to say, the worship book, the hymnal of the Old Testament, a full third of them are laments. Jesus lamented. The prophets lamented. We have it throughout Christian history, this not only, you know, um, 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 okayness, this permission, but this call for us to say, I have felt something. I have experienced something. This has happened to me. This needs to be acknowledged. This is actually a lot of what's going on in our culture right now with some of the conversations about history and how we should teach history, that there are those who are coming and saying, listen, there are parts of our history that we have not acknowledged, we have 
not looked at. They have been deep and they've been painful about slavery in this country, and about the treatment of indigenous people, and about oppression of women. And, and that's not all there is to this country. There's some really great things about this country, but those things need to be remembered. They need to be looked at. They need to be grieved. They need to be felt because that happened. Those need to be seen. You see, pain wants to be seen. That's why we have memorials. That's why we put up memorabilia. You know, uh, we have a high school in this town called Memorial. And, and I've asked so many people over the year, do you know what that's a memorial of, why they call it memorial? And I can't tell people, well, you know, I don't know that. Why is that? Well, if you walk in the doors, it is a memorial to those in the area who've given up their lives in war. It's actually a memorial. It's actually that this is worth being remembered. And this is what you really need to hear this weekend, is that your pain wants to be seen, it wants to be remember, remembered, and, and it wants to be um, um, discovered. So, so, so the problem is, is that because of our pain, and very often for many of us how we grew up, particularly in our culture, and particularly America, in this part of the world, because we tend to be a lot of Northern Europeans, and you know, this is a Northern European, happy. <laughs> this is them sad. <laughs> this is them really sad. This is them really happy. Okay, that's kind of how we express emotion, right? Okay, maybe you grew up in that home, you know? But, but there are two things fighting inside of us. It's a desire to hide and a desire to be seen. You have this deep desire that says, look at me. Look at what's happened to me. Look at who I am. Look at what I've gone through. I have a story and I want to be seen. And then there's another part that says, but don't look at me. Okay, this actually comes out in the laments. For instance, here's a lament that, that, that says, don't look, hide your face from my sins, blot out my iniquities. And this shows up a lot in laments. Laments say, nations look away, people look away. Don't look at me, this is terrible. Don't look at what happened. It's just, I'm a, I'm a distress, I'm a disgrace, I'm an offense. Turn your back, don't look at me, don't see me. But then in the same lament very often, you get this. This is one of the most common themes of lament, that I need to be seen, I need to be found. I need to be understood. This needs to be expressed. This is inside me. It's got to come out. How long, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? This is how I feel. It's an accusation. God, you have forgotten me. You have let me down. You have broken your promise to me. And how long is this going to be the case? How long will you do this? Hide your face from me. How long? You refuse to look at me. It's like you've turned your back on me. It's that this is going on and, and, and you just won't look. You won't see, because somehow if you'd see, you'd do something, you'd be something, you'd say something. And so this deep feeling within us to, to both be seen and to hide goes at war with us. And, and so lament is the place where you find the courage to say, okay, I'm going to find the faith and the courage not to hide anymore. I'm going to find a way to, to cry out to God, and I'm going to be real about the experience that I had. I'm going to write it. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to write a song about it. I'm going to share it. This is what happened to me, and then I'm going to bring the emotion to it by saying it was like this. I'm going to craft a poetic uh, image around it, a metaphor, a simile, something. It was like this. It felt like this. It was a storm. It was a weight. It was a pressure. It was crushing. I was buried. Hey, this is what it was like, and I'm going to let that come out, and I'm going to cry out to God, and then I'm going to share it with God. I'm going to share it with others beyond God. I'm going to say more about that in a minute. And then when I can do that as an act of worship, perhaps the most pure worship, the most true worship we have, and then I'm going to call out to God. I'm going to make an ask to God to do something. I'm going to ask him to heal me or restore me or, or, or vindicate me or remember me or restore me. I'm going to ask God. And, and, and here's the thing. The reason that we want to hide, the reason why I want to, 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 to stick away is that we're afraid. We're afraid, and, and none of us want to admit we're afraid because we're embarrassed we're afraid, but we're afraid. We're afraid if we'll be seen, it's everything from we won't be enough, or we're too broken, or if we get close to the pain, this is one of the big things we learn about lament, if we get too close to the pain, it will overwhelm us. We'll become enmeshed with it. It'll become who we are, when actually the exact opposite is the case. We learn this from experience and from the scriptures. That, 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 that when, if you really want to become a mesh with your pain, if you want to be defined by your pain and let it shape who you are, ignore it. Push it away. Because it becomes like a monster that hides around corners. And so you push it away. You don't think about it. You don't act about it. You just put your head down and go. And it jumps out around corners and it terrifies you. 
Okay? The other thing it does is it's inside of you, so it leaks out in dysfunctional ways, in healthy ways, compulsions and aggressions and isolation and all the things that are, are so powerful. That's one of the main reasons, one of the main ways people hide is they isolate. They push people away. Sometimes they're very clever about it. Some of you are very sneaky about this. You push people away by always being the person who helps people, but you never let anybody help you. You see, that's not healthy. That's not good. That's not a mutually beneficial relationship. It's not a friendship, okay? And, and some of us do it by working all the time or performing all the time. Some of us do it by self-sabotaging, but those are all ways of isolating, pushing people away, punching people in the nose before they can ever get close because what if they punch me in the nose? So, so, so this is the thing. We think if we push that away that that's the safest thing, but what that does is it begins to define us, begins to shape us. The way you get free from your pain, the way your pain becomes a benefit for you, even a blessing for you, is when you lament it, when you are honest about it, you express it, and you look at it, and you get close to it because then you realize, I can face this. Listen now, listen. I can face this and handle it with God's help. And so I don't need to be terrified of this. I can remember this and get close to it and tell the story, and it will not consume me. It will not define me. It actually takes it outside of you so you can look at it, you can understand it. And, and then it brings this incredible healing that now I understand this, it helps me put myself back together. Remember, one of the things we've been saying about uh, um, trauma is that trauma disintegrates us. It dis disintegrates our thoughts. So, so under trauma, our emotion, I'm sorry, our feelings. Uh, under trauma, our feelings get out of control, fear, panic, all these kinds of things, um, um, anxiety, anger, all those things. And when our thoughts get disentangled, our, our feelings get dis disentangled, are disintegrated from our thoughts, then we start having these extreme thoughts. And it's not that these thoughts are completely wrong. They're just imprecise. They're exaggerated. We start saying things like, no one loves me. I'd be better alone. Be better if I weren't even here. God has forsaken me. Nothing's good. I'm always going to feel bad. We start making these absolute statements that, that, that have some truth in them, that, that my pain's worse than anyone else's pain, but they're imprecise. They're inaccurate. This then tears us apart from our actions. Our actions don't seem to be in line with good thinking or, or they seem to be out of touch with what we're feeling. So we're lonely, but we're pushing people away, right? We, we want healing, but we keep doing things that make us spiritually or emotionally sick. And, and so you have this life that's fractured from our feelings, our thoughts, and in our actions. What lament does is it expresses all that. That's why laments are so crazy when you read them. Because the, the lament people will say, oh, I'm this way, and they'll say this thought, and then they'll say something totally opposite. God, you're so good, but you've forsaken me, okay? All my friends are faithful, but no one is faithful. You know, all the things that are just vomited out there. And, and so, so you get it out, it separates from you, and then it allows you to come back. And when it separates from you, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions reintegrate. So that your, your mind slows down. Your thoughts become more precise, more clear. Listen now, more in line with reality. And then you start finding you have more control over things like your compulsions and your difficulties. So this ancient practice of lament is actually wonderful for, our, for setting you free. That's why it's so important that we learn not to hide. And lament is where we say, you know what, I'm done hiding. I'm going to turn around. You know, one of the questions you need to ask yourself is what fear is chasing you? What anxiety, what thing from your past is changing you? You know what you need to do? If you're walking down the road and something's chasing you and you're afraid of it, stop, turn around, and face it. Say, okay, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to tell this story. Okay, I'm going to punch it in the nose if that's the kind of person you are. Or I'm going to, and you know, you say, well, I don't think I can face it. Well, Christ is with you. Jesus is with you. God is with you. And lament is where you turn around and you say, All right, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to write about this. I'm going to sing about this. I'm going, to, I'm going to paint about this. I'm going to find some way to express because this has happened to me and it needs to be seen. That's lament. That's the power of lament. And it's this fight between look at me and please don't look at me. You have to overcome that and say, you know what? I'm going to look at this. I'm going to bring it to God and I'm going to bring it to others because what's being described here is a desire to remember. Now, we're in chapter 5 of the book of Lamentations. So five independent. So this is one of those times where every chapter is its own individual poem with a different theme. So these are poems. Okay, Lamentations is a book of poems. It's expression. So it's full of imagery and hyperbole and exaggeration and, and over the top. So if you're looking for a real linear, making sense, kind of point-by-point, point, logical, don't this book, no. 
okay? It's just not, all right? But instead what you get is just a blah. This is what happened, and this is what I feel, and this is what you did, God, and this is what I did, God, and this is what they did, God, and it's you, thee, me, oh, blah, blah, blah. And what that does is it gets it outside so you can look at it. Now, chapter 5 has a theme, and the theme is remember. Another way of saying it, see me. Look at me. I need to be seen. And again, if you're one of those people say, you know, I don't need that. I'm fine. You know, it's okay. I, my deal, it wasn't that painful. It wasn't that bad. Stop that. Okay? Don't do that to yourself. You would never treat a stranger like that. Because what you went through, what you go through, what you feel, you say, oh, other people are way worse than that. Yeah, great. That's their story. Let's talk about your story. For you to be able to give yourself permission to feel, to be seen, to feel, to, to do whatever you need to do, to scream, to yell, to cry, whatever, that's what this is all about. He says, remember. Okay, look at what the scriptures say in chapter 5. Okay, look at verse 2. Remember, O Lord, and this comes through as, as you do the devotions this week, because we're going to do the devotions this week, right? Yeah, yeah, all right, that's better. First service was not nearly as good as that. So way to go, second service. <laughs> Terrible first service people. Anyway, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. Um, um, the theme of this, you're going to see, is being seen and being noticed and, and just this thing, this happened. This needs to be acknowledged that this happened. Someone needs to know. I mean, that's one of the most amazing things and horrible things about grief. You, you've had something that happened, and it happened to you. You lost the person. You lost the job. The marriage ended. The, your kid's in trouble, and, and you can barely move. It, it, you know, I always describe gr grief as like walking through molasses. I just, I'm struggling to think clear and do clear. I'm struggling to care. Just my whole world has been discombobulated. And the thing that's so terrible about that is you look around and everybody's going on like nothing happened. And you just want to say, don't you know the whole world has ended? Don't you know that everything has changed? Don't you know that, that something amazingly horrible has happened? How can you be okay in the midst of what has happened here? And of course your rational mind says, well, of course it didn't happen to them and they got to live and this is all. But, but, but your feeling is someone see this. Someone feel this. And it's an amazing thing because what I've found very often, my experience with grief and as I walk with many, many people through grief is that they'll say, you know, when I'm alone, I just want people to come by. And when they come, I just want them to leave. And, and so people with grief, and this is important if you're ministering to someone with grief, when they're saying like this, just lean into this. Okay? Just make the extra effort to be there. Even, even if they're giving you signs of time to go or those kind of things, just lean into it. Now, you have to be wise and discerning and all that. But, but, but people are constantly saying, say, well, what am I supposed to do? The best you can and just love them and be there. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. But listen to what he says. Remember, O oh Lord, what has followed us. Look and see our disgrace. This humiliating thing has happened to us. It is amazing how often the laments talk about shame. That, that because this has happened to me, I'm embarrassed. I'm humiliated. I, I, I'm made to feel weak and small and poor. And, and, and I hate the way that feels. That's one of the reasons we want to push it away. We want to ignore it. He says, but you need to see this. He says, our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. So that's what we are counting on. That's what we look forward to. The hope of the future that we thought, the plans we had, man, they're just gone. And you just need to acknowledge that and feel that with me. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our, our core relationships have been changed, either through death or loss. And in this case, it was literal death. These people went through an incredible time, like 100 years of war, literally 100 years of war, and a 30-month siege that ended with starvation and horrible things that happened. And they said, you need to see this. You need to understand this. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. And so it's mothers losing children. And it's just this, this call <coughs> that God to the nations, to people. You need to see what has happened, what's been lost. He goes on later in verse 13 and 14. So again, you'll see the theme. But, O oh Lord, I cry to you in the morning. My prayer comes before you. Lord, why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hide your face from me? Again, there's that accusation that, that I need you to look at me. I need you not to just throw me away. I need to be seen. I need to have someone acknowledge that I'm here and that this has happened to me, and this has happened in my life, in my community, in my family, goes on. Why do you forget us forever? Okay, again, this is what he's saying to God. God has said, I'll never forget you. I've, I've carved you in the palm of my hands, but this is how he feels. Again, it's, it's emotion that's very high, making imprecise thoughts and actions that are all disconnected. They're all over the place. It just doesn't make sense. This is the nature of trauma, and lament 
Again, expresses it so we can reintegrate in a healthy way. Why do you forget us forever? Why do you forsake us for so many days? Why is it lasting so long? Okay, it's one of the hard things about trauma and grief and loss and pain and depression and those things is, is man, I just had an end date. I could hold out if I knew when it was going to get better, you know, or if it was just going to go away at once. But my experience has been these things don't just stop. They just kind of drift away till one day you notice, boy, I feel pretty good today, you know? Wow, I, I, did, I didn't remember to feel bad today. And, and, and this is the way healing comes. But, but this is the point. He's saying, see this experience, express this experience. And so, 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 so here's the big question I want to ask you. I want to ask you, how are you doing at not hiding? Be- because again, the danger of isolation and all the creative ways we hide, whether it be through good things or bad things or being quiet or degrading our own pain, our own story, our own hurt, how are you doing at hiding? Maybe you're a champ. If, if, if this game were hide and seek, you'd be world champion. But, but, but don't you feel that part of you that's saying, but, but I want to be seen. I need to be seen. I was created to know and be known. And, and part of that is my story. And my story's messy My story's hard. My story's difficulty. And and again, if you're saying, well, my story's really not that bad, though, Paul. I should be doing better. Do you hear the shame you're pouring on yourself? Do you hear that? That that's not from God. Your story, your pain is your story. And so it needs to be expressed. So many ways you can learn to tell this story. Um, um, I'm going to talk here in a minute about a lot of the different ways you can do that. But one of the ways you can do it is just by telling your story, okay? And, 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 so, so let me say this. So a lot of feedback about this sermon series, all right? Lots of people sending email, talking to me, and there's several people at different levels. Some people say, wow, more than anything else, this sermon has, these sermons have been permission giving. What they mean by that is, I never knew that I could say things like that to God and feel these things. It feels very good to be able to be honest and real, and whew, that just feels good. Others are saying, you know, it's not just, you know, um, 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 permission giving, I'm really learning how lament works. So they'll say, you know, that first week, you know, uh, where you talked about it begins with crying out to God, and then the, I did the devotions, and the second part was, you know, writing down the things that happened, and the third part is, you know, all about this thing of, of assigning the motion and the metaphor to it, and then the last part of it is where you make an ask for God to restore, to renew, to vindicate, some kind of thing like that. Boy, I get the bones, but I have an intellectual understanding of lament. Thank you for that. That's the intellectual Bible study crowd. And, and so, 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 so they're doing that. But, but here's the deal. If all you have done is say, boy, I like lament. I'm learning about lament, pro-lament. I really have a theological understanding of lament. But listen now, but you haven't practiced lament. You're missing the best part. If you haven't actually, actually taken the time, not just to come and enjoy the weekends, those kind of things, but actually sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write my story. I'm going to write this poem. I'm going to paint this picture. I'm going to talk this through with a friend. If you haven't done the thing where you've actually paid attention to what you feel, and feel, I feel angry, I feel disappointment, I feel embarrassed, I feel these things, and you, you felt that, and then you found a way to express it, well, you're missing the best point. Part, now, now there's a great advantage in just getting permission to know you can be like that with God. And there's great, under, great power in understanding how the, 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 the logistics or the, the, the structure of lament works, but, but that's kind of like, you know, creating a great meal and not eating it. This is where you come back and you say, okay, I'm going to practice. So, so there's lots of ways we're going to talk about how you can practice lament. But one of the things that, that, one of the ways we can do that is when we tell our story. So we have an incredible opportunity. So there's a wonderful man in our church named Drew, and Drew has been diagnosed, diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. And so not just that, but so much in his story, he's been through a world of, of trauma and pain. And uh, a couple weeks ago, he sat down with our, one of our care staff, and he just told just his story. He told what he's going through and they found a diagnosis and how he's making sense of it and good days and bad days. It's an hour-long podcast and we've got just a couple minutes here um, for you to listen and then of course you can get the podcast on the app or the online. But just listen to, to uh, man, there's so much good stuff here. Just take a listen and, and hopefully it'll inspire you to, to listen to the rest of the podcast. My which name is, is Steve Hay. Kind of a- My name is Steve Hay and I'm part of the care ministry team. Today I have the opportunity to bring to you a conversation with Drew Hagen. On August 3rd of 2022, I was um, diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. Each, Each step of that journey 
physically uh, has been a challenge, obviously. And in terms of talking about the lament, I mean, I'm, I'm no stranger to pain. I, this life is full of pain for everyone, I realize that. But I'm a believer in acknowledging pain and then working through that pain to a solution. Not everybody, it seems, agrees with that. For me, it's necessity. I have to acknowledge the pain, whatever it is. For me, that's it's not possible for me to work through that without first acknowledging that pain. And part of that pain is, is the lament. Part of that pain is, um, why me? Why have you, why mm -hmm. have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Why, mm -hmm. I, how long is this going to go on? Fear is the number one thing because mm -hmm. fear is a poison pill and it will cripple you if allowed to grow. So approaching that and understanding that a certain amount of fear as you go through that is normal. You, you have to gain control. And once you gain control of that, then you can start talking about, in my opinion, the second most important part of uh, trauma or suffering or pain is, is healing. You don't stop living at that moment of diagnosis. You are the same person in terms of embracing what I have to give for who I am uh, I think is really important in in terms of when we're talking about human connection with each other having someone treat me as though uh, I'm here for not out of pity necessarily but um, for for what I bring to the table because I'm still bringing things to the table. Can you close us with a word of prayer that would be in essence to that person who is at that point where you were five months ago? Yeah, absolutely. And we ask that whoever may have just received this diagnosis, great God, that they can stop for a moment and take a breath and realize that they are not alone and that you can fill them full of your love and that they can give that love to others and reflect your greatness in it. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You know, as I was listening to the podcast that Drew gave, it is just layered with insight and wisdom, not just from this part of his story, but there's been some really other painful things that are part of his story from his past. And he just felt a call to come in and share this and speak to this. And it's insight about, you know, the day he got the diagnosis and helping his family and his family helping him and having good days and bad days and going through treatment and just how long the season has been. At one point in the interview, he said, wow, I just realized it, it's been like six months. It seems like it's been six years. And, and just, there's, it's layered with wisdom that only comes through a person who's going through pain and, and trauma in a difficult way with God. And so if, if you're in a tough spot, if you're in a place you want to understand this deeper, and, and just to see this lament, if you're coming alongside someone who's experienced a, 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 a profound illness, this would be just a good thing for you to listen to, to, to draw near to that, to, to get this podcast and to listen. You know, this, this is an example of telling the story of being seen. And, and so what would it look like for you to be seen right now in your life? It could be, you know, something like Drew. You, you tell your story, you write it out, and then you call a trusted friend. You have to try the trusted friend. And I get it, that can be hard because there's going to be people who are going to try to try to fix you or tell you how to feel. You got to find a safe person who you can process. Maybe for you, you realize, boy, a ton of the church is going through emotionally healthy church, a trauma reboot, and those have already started. I've missed it. Well, there's actually another session of Emotionally Healthy Relationships getting ready to fire off here in just a couple weeks, uh, three, four weeks, I think, and you could do that as well. Maybe you're at the point where you're finally just here and you're realizing, you know, Paul, that you, you just described me. I've been here. I've been hearing this lament series, and, and I, I feel the permission. I'm understanding a little bit more about how lament works, but I haven't done it. And, and what it looks like for me is actually... I need to talk to someone. I probably need to talk to someone professionally, a counselor or a therapist, and just tell my story in a safe place where, where I can just get close to it in a safe way where someone's going to be with me, with God. And, and you could go to the Jacobswell 
a web page and there's a care tab and you can click on that care tab and under, underneath there are, are a, a list, an extensive list of counselors with different things who we have vetted and who we would say these would be people who we would recommend. And so, so you could do something like that. Maybe for you, it looks like writing your story, sharing your story. It looks like a painting. For some people, they express lament through some kind of art or memorial. For others, it's by saying, you know what? I, I want to do this thing at, at a pain as a child. I want to do something to help children who are going through difficult times. It's a way of me expressing this thing that is helping me. And, and what that does, again, is it takes that which is inside of you, that which is causing your emotions and your thoughts and your actions to be just disintegrated, and it sets all that out of you. It'll always be part of you, okay? It'll always be part of your life, but it's separate from you. It's not who you are. It's something that happened to you that affected you. And so you can look at it, you can learn from it, and you will actually feel your mind begin to slow down. You will actually begin to get your thoughts clearer, listen now, more in line with reality. And you'll actually feel the compulsion or the need to escape or fight. or you know, It just gets better. Now, it won't happen all at once. It'll happen over a season. You learn how to do that because, because now it's something that happened to you. It's not who you are. Who you are is found in God. And what that does is it opens up your life. It opens up this beautiful space in your life to feel things you maybe haven't felt in a long time. You know, one of the things that has just it shocked me about this series and about doing this teaching on lament first in my own life, and then in the life of so many people, is how much joy I found, and how much joy people are finding. Part of it is just relief that they have permission, but part of it is just this, 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 this incredible openness now that, my gosh, I can feel something other than that now that I've lamented it. I can get some of it outside of myself. Now, when I say joy, I don't mean giggly happiness. I, I, I like what the old theologian said about joy, is that it's an inward sense of well-being that cannot be shaken. That in spite of what's happened, in spite of what's been lost, in spite of the uncertainty of the future, I have hope, and I start feeling hope again. I, I, I have capacity to love. I have capacity to be creative again, to, to look forward. And, and, and I'm more than just my pain because I put it outside of myself through this incredible process of lament. This is what he means when he talks about restore. Uh, he says this, and this is the last few verses in the book of Lamentation. Restore to us yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Okay, so notice what he asks for carefully here. He doesn't say, restore all our stuff. Restore it the way it used to be. Restore it. He said, restore to us yourself. Because what I really get by going through trauma and lament is I get God. Is I get God. When, when I find that level of faith that I go to God with honest lament, and again, I accuse, I attack, I, I curse, I say all the things, I say, these are my thoughts, these are my emotions, and these are my actions, and, and this is what I did, this is what they did, this is what you did. And we find ways to express it. Ultimately, what we're left with is God. And so it comes back to this thing of saying, God, what we need more than anything else is not Jerusalem to be rebuilt, it's not a new wall, it's not a new temple. We need you. And so it's a restore to yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old. And then he ends. This is the last verse in, uh, in, in Lamentations. And I have it there for a reason. One, it's just a very surprising uh, verse. Because if you were and I were going to end the book of Revelation, we'd say, ah, I feel better now. Ah, resolved. Let's leave on a positive note. Not so much. Last thing they say in the Lamentations list says, you're going to restore us, O Lord, unless. And so it goes right back into the pain. Okay, because again, one of the things we've been saying about the nature of trauma, grief, loss, is it's not linear. It's not like, okay, I'm going to call to God, and I'm going to express my thoughts and my feelings, and I'm going to send a metaphor. Oh, that'll be better. Okay, nice linear line of healing. No, for me, it's like this. Okay, this is my line, right? Okay, and that's exactly what you see in lament. They're all over the place, okay? But notice how he ends. He says, unless you have utterly rejected us, okay, I want you, restore us, unless you've utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us, okay? Because this is still how it feels. This is what I want. And so even in the midst of lament, there's this rawness, there's this honesty that lays it out before God. And this is what brings us the healing. So again, let me just re-ask the questions I've been asking. How have you been hiding? How have you been hiding? You've been hiding just working fast, working more, keeping going. Has it been through dysfunctional behavior? Has it been through just slapping a God smile on it? How have you been hiding? 
Okay, then let me just ask you, you know, what would it look like for you to stop hiding? What would lament look like in your life? Is there some step you need to take to, to, to be free in a, in a way you never thought was possible? What could possibly be your next steps? For some of you, it's going to be, okay, I'm going to do this EMR. I knew I should have done it, and I didn't do it. Now it's my time for doing it. Some, some of you, it's, you know, I'm going to go to the web page. I'm going to find someone to talk to. I'm going to maybe call the care staff and say, who would you recommend? I'm going to, I'm going to look for that kind of, 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 of healing. For some of you, say, you know what? I've learned about the intellectual concepts of lament. I'm actually going to do the work. I'm going to actually sit down in a chair somewhere with an actual pen and an actual piece of paper, and I'm just going to start writing. You know? And again, you might shock yourself with what comes out. You know, one of my greatest fears is my children, after I'm dead, are going to find my journals. They're going to say, psycho. Okay, just, if you're listening, children, I was lamenting, okay? All right, all right? It's more about how I felt than what I said, thought, okay? And, and then here's the other thing. I'm going to find someone to share it with. So maybe for you it looks like finding that friend, you know, that you haven't talked to in a long time. The Holy Spirit's already put someone on your mind. You know what? Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to reach out to that person. I know when I went through my really dark time, the people I thought I would have gone to, I didn't go to. I just couldn't. Maybe they were too close or, or they're part of the pain. But God brought three people, very unlikely people. I would have never chosen them. And, and the Spirit just said, these are the people you need to go with and you need to talk with. And they didn't try to fix me. They didn't try to correct me. They didn't tell me how I felt. They just sat with me and let me say really unreasonable things. Horrible things that a pastor shouldn't say. They just kind of drove. Sometimes we just drive for, for one guy, we drive for hours and wouldn't say anything. I come home and I say, what did you talk about? Nothing. She said, how did you do that? So we're guys, we do that. We just don't say anything, you know. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you? Good, good, good talk. Okay, that's the end of it. That's the whole thing. But here's the deal. I'm going to find someone I can process this with. Maybe you're going to write something, you're going to share it. It's going to be really risky if you just say, I wrote this poem, I wrote this story, I need you to read this. I need someone to read it, okay? Because I need to be seen, your pain needs to be seen. Your hurt needs to be seen. You need to find a way to express it, even to God. Okay, trust him enough that you can be like that and he's still gonna love you. In fact, he's gonna be, he, just, he would just be so pleased and just overwhelmed, you know, again, just with, this is what I've been waiting for, my child. This is what I've been waiting for, okay? Let me restore myself to you. I'm gonna say a prayer. At the end of the prayer, the team's gonna come out and they're gonna sing another beautiful song of lament that, that was just an honest acknowledgement of of the, the trauma and the pain and the difficulty of this life. And so let me pray. Father, we come to you today and we thank you. We thank you that you are a God who we can come to real and raw and honest. We thank you for the times that you don't get mad because of how we feel or what we're expressing or what we're saying. Our thoughts that are unclear and imprecise, our emotions that are out of control, even our actions that are angry or depressed or struggling. God, we just acknowledge them we thank you that you are a God who greets us and meets us in that. We do pray, Father, with the writer of Lamentations, would you restore yourself to us as we learn this art of lament, this gift of lament, this worship of lament? Would you set the pain outside of us so it doesn't need to define us? Instead, we could be defined by you. That you'd create space in our life for things, again, like joy and peace and hope and creativity and discovery and learning and love. Father, we just pray that you would teach us this we know this is what you want to give us, um, that we would know you and we'd love each other better. And we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.